save your last breath to scream. What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to go back to a subject that I brought up in my review of Leviathan, a 1989 underwater science fiction movie that kind of got overshadowed by James Cameron's release of The Abyss. Now for starters, I want to say that personally, I love The Abyss. And in fact, I would probably say that movie may even be one of the director's best works by far. But as good as that movie is, this video isn't really about it. And instead, I wanted to talk about something else that came out that year and was in direct competition with it. Only this time around, instead of a genetic mutation or strange looking alien creature, we're dealing with a giant animal woken up from millions of years in the past. Much like Leviathan, today's movie wound up being an underwater monster film released in 1989 that didn't get too much love, which I think is a shame because it may just be one of the better movies released in that bunch. Deep Star Six is a 1989 thriller film directed by Sean S. Cunningham. It starred Toreen Black and Nancy Everhard and came out alongside all of those other underwater themed thrillers of the exact same year. Only this film has the distinct honor of being the very first in that long lineup, with Cunningham stating outright that he wanted to be the first one ahead of the pack that everyone was anticipating in the following months. Beginning development all the way back in 1987. And by the way, if you didn't know already, this is the guy that directed the original Friday the 13th back in 1980. And now nine years later, he's teamed back up with Harry Manfredini, who famously scored those old slashers, and they've put their talents together to tell the story of a ragtag group of people working at the bottom of the ocean who just so happen to run into a mysterious threat. Just like everyone else in these movies that came out in 89. Damn it, there's something in the... Now in the past, you guys may have already seen me cover Leviathan, which I described as the monster movie from 1989 that nobody remembers. And while that certainly remains true for the normies out there who don't know much about this sort of thing, that movie may very well be one of the better known entries in comparison to everything except The Abyss. Although I do find it funny to hear people claim that it was some sort of well-known classic, which in truth, none of these movies really are. Even The Abyss itself is kind of left behind in James Cameron's work when compared to Avatar. Titanic and The Terminator, if we're being honest. Not many people know The Abyss comparatively to those films. With that being said, just like Leviathan and everything else that came out alongside it, Deep Star Six was another box office dud with not too many people seeing it and the film instead falling away into obscurity along with everything else in this lineup. But does it deserve that fade? Well, in my honest opinion, I actually think Deep Star Six may very well be one of the best movies of that whole underwater trend of 89. And I'd say this as someone who wasn't even too hard on Leviathan. Sure, it's true that at their core, both films are kind of just lesser knockoffs of Alien with varying degrees of originality sprinkled in here and there, but this one in particular, I personally think, is way more appealing. So why do I say that? Well, what makes this entry so different happens to be the monster that they've chosen to bring to life, which believe it or not, is more believable than anything else from that set of films. The creature happens to be a giant prehistoric arthropod. The crew awakens from a part of the ocean that was said to possibly have life in it from millions of years ago. It's believed in particular to be some sort of Eurypterid or sea scorpion from way back in those times. Which one? Hey man, I don't even think the people making the film know, but bottom line is that the thing looks really cool and I would go as far to say that it may be one of the best monster designs of that underwater trend era. Stan Winston's work in the Leviathan creature is obviously great and the work from ILM for the early CGI in the Abyss is incredible, but there's something about the basic practical effects sea monster from millions of years ago in a story like this that just feels right to me. And even better, the story happens to be pretty good too. No joke, I was actually kind of surprised by how much I enjoyed the film and thought that it would have been, you know, just your ordinary run-of-the-mill monster flick, which is fine, but no, no, no. This was a little bit more than that, which I gotta give it credit for. The cast in the movie does a great job at feeling real world and down to earth in comparison to some of these other films. We'll get to the rift when we get there. Uh, and in particular, the pseudo-villain of this movie came off as such a terrible bastard that I could 
couldn't wait to see him get what's coming to him. Unlike most of these films, the human antagonist isn't necessarily some sort of threatening force, and is instead someone who simply loses his cool under the circumstances that everyone has been given, in a similar way to how Michael Bean goes crazy in The Abyss. The character of Snyder in this film is responsible for so much bad stuff that goes down in Deep Star 6 that when you see the way this science fiction movie goes about dealing his fate, well, it's like, it's definitely something to remember, and I think you're gonna compare it to some other movies that came out later on. Now, like I said before, I know that when it comes to a lot of these films that came out after Alien and Aliens, especially these underwater movies from 1989, you can immediately tell when they're trying to copy or redo scenes from those classic films. They were very popular at the time, so it's only natural that other people would want to do their own versions of them. But what I genuinely like about Deep Star 6, I can't believe I'm, say, I'm so positive on this, I know people hate it, it's the fact that yes, while it is a little derivative of the Alien series, the characters are so fun, the thrills are so entertaining, the monsters so cool, it doesn't look real 100% of the time, but man, like, all this stuff is happening that you really don't mind any of that derivative Alien stuff at the end of the day. Deep Star 6 is a facility set up underwater where a bomb goes off, and a giant sea scorpion beast that could chew up some dinosaurs arises up from the depths, and honestly, when everyone has to do their best to survive, you get a solid experience akin to something like you'd find in a Deep Blue Sea or Michael Crichton's Sphere later on in the 90s. Maybe not as articulate and definitely not the greatest thing ever made, but if you're a fan of old school horror, science fiction, action, or adventure films in general, I think you really do have an opportunity to have a lot of fun with Deep Star 6. Not all aliens come from space. And look, I know that I may be in the minority when I say these things about the film, because not too many people seem to like it, but when it comes to films like this, you have to go into them not expecting something as incredible as a Jurassic Park, or an alien, a predator, or Planet of the Apes kind of quality. But hey, if you ever wanted to see how the creator of Friday the 13th would tackle an underwater alien-esque movie with a prehistoric monster attacking people, then this just may be the film for you. With that being said, guys, I'd love to know what all of you think about the movie. I'm trying not to spoil much here here because I went in blind, I really enjoyed it, and I want other people to, you know, at least have a shot at the same. But hey, what are all of your thoughts on Deep Star 6? Have you seen it, and do you think it's among the better underwater movies of 1989, like I personally do? I'd love to talk to my friend Tony from Hack the Movies, or even the guys from Movie Dumpster about this one, because this seems right up their alley. I had a lot of fun, and I think some of you will too, so hey, whatever your own thoughts and opinions on Deep Star 6 happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.